depending on your boat, you configure your boat differently, where your batteries sit inside the boat and the you know, distance that you run to your power, whether it's a starting battery or whether it's your trolling motor. I've had a boat where I had the batteries in the back and I ran the wire all the way up to the bow of the boat. And uh, I noticed some different things. So I had some different wiring on there. I hope I made the choice. It was a heavier gauge wire, but I don't know if that's the case. Tell me about taking the power from where it is in your boat to the source, from the source to where you need it. Uh, that's, that's a great question, Jeff. Um, you know, it's, it's really important to, to understand electricity and boat wiring to properly and safely uh, wire your boat and, and again to give you peak performance. So in general, if your batteries are located a long distance from your trolling motor or any load for that matter, you're going to want to increase the wire gauge, mm -hmm. you know, to, to a large wire size. Uh, it just reduces uh, energy loss and heat um, on your boat. If the batteries are closer to the trolling motor, you're obviously able to get uh, um, get by with a lower gauge wire. But you know, we we always recommend following ABYC uh, standards. Um, that's the American Boating and Yacht yeah, Council. Okay. Yeah. So I can look online and, and check on C and say, okay, what is the distance? Because for me, a shorter distance might be five or six feet. A longer distance, probably ten plus feet. But I'm sure it's listed in there. The thing, I guess. I actually did write on that one, is I did take a heavier gauge wire, pulling all the then you know 24 volts uh, system into the trolling motor. Um, but that's something that can affect the performance if you have too thin of a gauge of wire. Absolutely. Um, and we do have some wiring guidelines on our website. So if you vis visit uh, MincotaMotors.com, under the support tab, uh, you can get some more information there as well. It's perfect, because it's the kind of thing you kind of remember but the second that you go to do the installation, you're going to really need to know, and at least there's a resource there at MincoteMotors.com. Absolutely. Perfect. All right, Dan, so I've got the right batteries, and I'm running that power up to the bow of my boat, and it might be 5 feet away, it might be 12, 15, 20 feet away. Who knows how the wire needs to go. Um, I would like to have, you know, one wire going all the way from the battery source to the trolling motor. Sometimes I don't have enough and I'll make a splice. But if I have to interrupt that single part of wire, uh, give me a little guidelines on either problem solving or how to do it right. Sure, um, absolutely, Jeff. So, you know, everybody, you got to keep in mind you're in a, a marine environment, which means wet, right? That's so true. water and electricity don't always mix well, and uh, you want to be, be aware of that. So what happens if you get water in your electrical wires? Um, it will start to oxidize or corrode um, your wires. Um, so it's very important when you are doing wiring in your boat, whether you're making splices or uh, connecting the, the final run of wire to your trolling motor, you want to make sure that that connection is first of all made very well mm -hmm. so you don't lose energy and that it's sealed properly. So whether that's using crimps or what, you want to make sure those crimps are, are tightly clamped down, but it's always a good idea to put uh, um, heat shrink tubing over those splices um, and if it's adhesive lined, that's even better because all that melts together and seals up your connection. Which, uh, you know, when I look at underneath uh, the boat and you know, underneath the deck, uh, there's water that gets underneath there, right? I mean, nope. sometimes you have to operate the bilge more than you would like to do, uh, which means some of these wires would be getting wet. And so you're saying that seal, the heat shrink tube, will help do that. Yep, it will help it seal that off and keep the water out of your electrical connection. My first choice is to have a single uninterrupted wire from the source of power up to where it's discharged. I guess if I can't do that, then I'll follow some of those guidelines. Okay, so uh, I see some of these chargers fuses, uh, and that reminds me, if, if I'm taking power from my batteries to, the, to where it's gonna be discharged at the trolling motor, there's probably a standard to put a fuse or uh, something in there that protects against power surges and whatever else. Uh, any general guidelines I could do to make sure that I get the right power to the motor? Yeah, when, anytime you're hooking up to a battery, again, it's a, a uncontrolled energy storage device. Uh, you want to make sure that we have uh, circuit breakers or fuses in line um, near the battery. 
Again, ABYC um, specifies specific guidelines on that distance from the battery to, to your circuit breaker or fusing device. I guess I can appreciate that because the number of batteries, the type of batteries, the gauge of wire, the distance, all make some different variables. So if you at least consult ABYC standards, uh, you'll know where to put the fuse, what size fuse to do. But I think the important part is, I know I need to make a fuse in case that uh, discharge happens in a way that the motor doesn't like. That, that's correct. Or something shorts out on your boat. Okay. Good to know. Okay. So I've had a number of sizes of boats in my life, from a 16-foot aluminum boat, and I've powered boats that are larger fiberglass boats. They weren't mine, but I know this. They take a different size trolling motor, <laughs> and they take a different battery amount, right? So, so this one is a 12-volt battery. If I have a 24-volt system or 36-volt system or motor, I'm going to need more batteries than just this one. Um, there is a way, though, to wire them, both in series and in parallel, that we should cover off on to give folks an idea of how do you do wiring for 12, 24, 36 volt systems. Oh, absolutely. There is definitely a, a, a right and a wrong way to, to make your electrical connections. So let's first talk about the, the, the trolling motor voltage being higher than the 12 volts. So as we discussed, most marine batteries in your group 27, 24, 27, 31 size are all 12 volt batteries. Mm -hmm. If we need 24, if we need 36, then we, we hook up the batteries um, in series. Basically, one battery um, is going to be your low battery, then you're going to put another battery where you connect the negative from, or the positive from the, the first battery to the negative of the second battery, and then keep going down the chain. They add up, the voltages all add up, it's in series. So take me through that one more time, because if I've got two or three batteries in there, um, where do I draw, you know, a, a one of the wires from the positive and negative? Take me through that. Sure. Um, so you're going you're gonna to take the first battery, it'll be the low side, it'll be negative, we'll go to your trolling motor. The positive of that battery will get connected to the negative of the second battery. And then after that, the positive of the second battery is going to go to the negative of the third battery. And then the third battery will be the positive side of the trolling motor. And that's how you would get a 36 volt system with three batteries. Perfect. And um, in case when I go to wire my boat, I don't remember that, I can just look at the Mincota website and it will show me a nice diagram of how to wire those in series like that. That right? is correct. Okay. So that is a battery in series. And again, that's for um, uh, drawing power from multiple batteries for a, a motor that's designed for bigger boats, uh, more power, so that's where you need those. Uh, but when would I use uh, a different kind of wiring configuration and, and doing that in parallel? When does that come into play? So a parallel is, is a different type of connection and the whole intent of connecting batteries in parallel is to get, to get more power or more runtime out, out of a system, whether it's a trolling motor or something else. So when you connect two batteries in parallel, you're not going to increase the voltage. You're going to increase the overall capacity. In that case, you're connecting the two negatives together and the two positives together on the battery and then tapping off of that for a 12 volt system in that case. So the voltage stays the same, but I get more capacity. And we talked earlier about like, if you think about group numbers, 24, 27, or 31, in general, is like a gas tank, right? Yes. The larger the number, the larger capacity. If you can't get the capacity that you need, I guess that's the way to do it, to wire them in parallel, just as you mentioned, and then you can stay out, uh, you know, obviously a, a lot longer in that sense, if it's a 12 volt system. That, that's correct. 